Uh, we'll get started here. Thanks everybody for your time. <clears throat> Just a reminder, this meeting will be about Health East, West Nepal, and peace of mind. Um, for those of you that are also training at the Irish Dome, please join us for the next, for the beginning of the next meeting, just so that you've got that as well. Um, I'm going to run through some pieces. Please stop me if you have questions. Um, there's, there's a spot at the end for questions as well, but if you've got stuff as we're going, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Um, so <clears throat> just couple of quick things before we start. Um, we need to be able to keep our kids playing as long as we can. So our goal is to be following everyone's rules and guidelines as closely as we can so that we can continue to facilitate people on the field. Um, I have had several people ask, I know some of the school districts have just over the weekend announced that they're gonna go back to full distance learning just as a reminder, we follow guidance from the state and the health department, um, as does the school, but the schools don't dictate what we are doing or what we're allowed to do. So we are continuing to follow guidance uh, directly for organized sports and youth, um, and we'll continue to do that. But just know that just because um, school has gone to distance learning doesn't necessarily mean that we also are not able to be participating. Um, facilities are going through this for the first time. So we've been fortunate and we've been playing since June. We've had lots of practice, um, practicing with protocol and frankly, probably enough time to forget some of the protocol that we're supposed to be doing. Um, so the facilities have been looking to us to help give them some guidance on what we have been doing, what we should be doing, uh, and really how we can work together because frankly, uh, they have to make sure they're meeting all of their guidelines in order for us to even be able to be in there. So um, being, being good partners is really important through this. The other thing I will remind you is that every single facility is its own individual business with its own square footage and its own process. So know that it's not a one size fits all when it comes to their rules and regulations. Um, and I would just, I would really ask if someone's telling you from the facility to do something, please just say yes and try to do our best to get it done as quickly as possible. There, as we all know, as we transition inside, there's a little bit of clunkiness just as we get our routine down. Uh, this will add to it clearly, but um, yeah, just if we can, if we can do our best to, to be as, as good of partners as possible. Um, two things that I, well, actually the last three things on this page, uh, be vigilant. Masks are mandatory. The only exception to that is for the kids when they are physically playing. If you have something going on where you have people sitting on the side, so you either are doing an activity where you have a group that's not, that is not active, or if you are in a game where you have subs, your subs, your people on the sidelines need to have masks on. Um, that's been really loud and clear from all the facilities. So um, please help us be, be mindful of that for ourselves, but also for our kids and parents as well. Um, and then the other thing that I really, we need to be focused on is making sure that your availability is always updated after every session. Um, Obviously, we want families to be updating it for themselves, but I'd ask you as coaches to make sure that it does reflect who was at the practices. Um, as we start working indoors, the facility management actually want us to report who was at their field house or domes each week. So we do have to be able to be reporting. The reason for that is <clears throat> if there is a positive exposure, they need to be able to also report to the health department. We'll certainly do that in coordination, but I need to be able to have information that I can work with them and provide to them. Um, and then last two things on this slide, expect changes because I think we've all gotten used to that here in the last six months. It will, it will change. What I have on here today is as of today, um, something can change tomorrow. So be patient, expect that there will be changes, and please be sure that 
you're communicating with your families, your players, with club and staff as often as, as you need to, but certainly as changes are coming through. Um, so if there's questions, don't hesitate to ask uh, once we're done with this, or if questions come up through the week as we start getting into facilities, please reach out. Um, all right. <clears throat> We'll start with Healtheast. So I think you're all familiar with Healtheast. Uh, the diagram here has the door at the bottom. Uh, so this is where you would be entering. We Healtheast has asked that there are no parents allowed in the field house. Um, we we've worked with them to at least be able to have the youngest kids have one parent in with them. Um, I do suspect this first week that maybe our U9s and U10s to the extent that they're in there that a parent may be bringing them in to drop them off. Um, so please just encourage your families that they should be dropping their kids off. They can come in the field house. Uh, they'll take their field when it comes time to go you'll be exiting out the emergency exit door. So nobody will ever go back into the lobby from the field house. They should exit the building from the emergency exit. The doors won't, the alarm won't sound despite the fact that the handle says it will. Um, and then parents should just go ahead and wait for their kids right out here. Fortunately, there's big glass windows so kids can see out, parents can see in, um, but we wanna make sure that for the kids that are being picked up, that they're coming out when there's a parent there. Um, let's see, some other things for Healtheast. <clears throat> um, they have the smallest capacity limit of all of the domes and field and uh, turf spaces that we're in. Their capacity is 100. That includes players, coaches, referees, spectators, everyone. So um, please, do your best to remind families uh, when we have games at Healthies that it is limited to one spectator. And that does get us pretty close to that 100 person mark when we, when we start to add in the teams and the officials and everything. So um, I've had a few people ask if that's our number. It's not our number, it's the facilities number. Um, so, uh, Note, note on that. Um, let's see, what else? Again, the one exception to the no spectators during training is for the community program. They will be allowed to have one spectator. Um, and then when you, so historically practices, you would likely have your team showing up 15, 20 minutes early. Um, now, because of capacity limits and the way that we have teams uh, scheduled in the field house, you'll need to be not arriving more than five minutes ahead of your practice time. I do know that that will impact some of you on how you're warming up. So I would say be thoughtful with your players on, are there things that they can be doing ahead of even attending? Um, are there things they can do, I don't know, in the parking lot until it's icy and cold? Um, be creative, but just we because we can't have more than the hundred people, we can't be in doing warm ups ahead of our practices. Um, and then, likewise, we just need to be really uh, conscious of the end time so that you are up and out of the field, um, so that the next coach can take their field on their start time. Uh, let's see. I think I've seen a couple of chats come through, so let's just see. What Uh, oh, yes, restrooms will be open, masks on, thank you. Uh, okay. Cool. Any other questions about Health East before I move on? Um, I do have a question, or yeah. sorry. Um, so I, I noticed that uh, the other two field houses that we're playing in, they mentioned on their website that they're kind of increasing the air exchange in there. Mm. I didn't see on, uh, I went to the, you know, Woodbury page for Healthies. I didn't see any mention of that. Do you know anything about that? I know like the West St. Paul one, they're going to try to run that at capacity. They got an ionization thing. 
just wondering what you've heard from like healthies in regards to that stuff. Um, Steve Peterson, have you heard anything? I've not heard anything specific from them. I have not either. But that's a good question. We can at least go ask that question and send it back to the group. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. Yeah. Um, public walks, walkers and runners. I, I do not believe that there's any public walking or running going on while there are renters of the field house. I think it's exclusive, like when you've rented it, you are the exclusive user. From my understanding, the city is not allowing any walking and running of the public. Okay, thank you. Um, can a player donate one of their spectators? That's generous of them. Uh, here's how it's going to work when it comes to spectators for games. Each team will be responsible for keeping track of your own limit. So um, definitely, I know through the high school season, there was um, just a list that was kept and then uh, teams you know you could fill in so if if we knew that sally wasn't going to have any parents there sally's spot would be open and you can figure out how to fill it with jane's other parents or some such thing um but i but leaving that uh spot management that's going to be up to the teams um just again we have to cap it at one per when we're at health east Lisa, will this same communication or a similar one be sent to all the families so they understand all these rules as well? Yeah, yes, uh, we will send it out to families, but uh, again, just because of the volume of information and the variety of information for each of the locations, um, I, wanted, I wanted to make sure you guys and girls were all good. Uh, that's also why I invited managers to attend this meeting. I will share the recording as soon as we're done so that we can just, we've got that as well. Um, but yeah, I, I anticipate that this will be kind of a big communication process as we get it to trickle through everybody. Agree, thank you. Um, Carl, let's see, Amanda, do you need to track parents attending? So yes, if. If you have parents that are attending for a game, we do need to know who those people are. Um, if it's just simply drop off and pick up, no, we don't, we don't need that at Health East, but we do for games. Um, Carl, to answer your question, there are times that we do share the space. Um, so uh, like where we would have just half of the field house or half of the Irish Dome, um, and so we've been also working with the facilities when we have those situations. Um, and just to be clear, when we have half of the field house, we only get half of the number of people. It doesn't matter how many people are on the other side, we only get 50. So obviously from a game perspective, that won't uh, necessarily come into play. We also tried to be really thoughtful as we were making the schedules so that we weren't gonna be too tight when it came to practices. Um, so Lisa, I have a question, an additional question. Yeah. yeah. So of course we, as a football club and, and the community have to police ourselves. Who's gonna police the other groups? Because we've seen throughout, you know, since we got back outside that a lot of the other groups do not follow they might have written a thing to the city and said they're going to do X, Y, Z. But yeah. I've seen too often no masks, no social distancing, etc. Yeah. So in that regard, I do think that is the benefit to being indoors because all of the indoor facilities have staff on site. Um, and my sense is just even having been inside the last couple of weeks with the girls academy teams, both for practices and games, the indoor staff has been really vigilant about yeah. like making sure that you're following protocol. Um, again, I think, I think particularly because it's new for them. So they're trying to figure out how to make it work and, and that people are doing it. 
think the other reality is our numbers keep going up. So the less we follow directions, the faster we're going to get told we're not allowed to be doing anything anymore. So, um, but I would say if you, if you're in a facility that it appears that the other renter is not following directions, please speak to facility management. It is their role to make sure that each of the, each of the organizations has to have a point person. Um, and we've, we've been in communication with the facilities on who that is. So if you run into issues, I would say just go ahead and talk to the facility management directly uh, and let them deal with it. But um, yeah, does that answer your question, Carl? Yes, thank you, I appreciate that. Was that both your questions or you had another one? Yeah, that, that was a question in regards to your previous response. Got it. Thanks. Um, okay, um, moving on, uh, West St. Paul. Uh, so West St. Paul field layout is, is uh, here, obviously. Um, there is only one entrance in and out of the, the dome. So, uh, I mean, we do have the two revolving doors and they are revolving. I do know the facility staff is uh, sanitizing those doors since they are touch points. Um, other, yeah, from a field perspective, nothing, nothing really special from the field layout itself. Um, and from a protocol, um, lobby is closed. They've boarded up and stacked up all the tables and chairs. So just know that that's not an option for parents to hang out in. Um, the lobby is really just a passing for people to get into the dome. Their capacity limit is higher. It's 250 total people. So um, that does allow on game days for teams to have two spectators per player, um, making sure, of course, that we're socially distanced, which actually for West St. Paul, by having two, you end up having to double up. Um, I think the other thing to remember is the socially distanced is from each other, so side to side, but it's also from the, the sideline, uh, so 10 feet back. So that we need to remember that we are not, you know, hugging the line. We've got to leave room for the referees and making sure the players have their space as well. Um, let's see, what else on this one? Again, updating Team Snap for your sessions. For West St. Paul, they're not allowing any um, spectators in. Um, obviously, for the community session, again, that, that is the exception. Uh, I think the only thing, other thing here that was specific was when in regards to any games that you're playing, we, uh, and Steve will need to go through and look at this, but just we'll figure out how early you can arrive from a warm up time and try to get that communicated out to you sooner rather than later. Some of that will depend on what's going on on field three. Um, if it's if we actually have field three, if we don't, but again, making sure that we're not exceeding that 250 capacity based on what all is going on in the field house. Um, any questions about West St. Paul or games? No. Okay. Um, Yes, Lisa, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Forever the fly in the ointment. No, no, um, you're good. You're good. Of course, the capacity is is down to the the management of facility owners. Um, you know, Health East had said 100 people. You mentioned 250 for West St. Paul. Do we as a football club have a policy? Uh, because, of course, the more people, the more... Uh, dangerous, if you will, for a better one of a better term. Um, yeah. Do we, as a club, since if 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 there are our games, i.e., Salvo as a host, can we put the parameters on the opponent and say you can only have one one parent, or have you considered that? Um, we have considered it, and we've decided that we're going to follow what each of the facilities says is their capacity uh, and. And the majority of the facilities do speak to spectators. Um, so we felt like it would be too 
frankly, too contradictory and too much to just keep track of for people if we're saying something more restrictive than the facility itself says. Um, okay. I you. do. I, I do feel like with West St. Paul, um, and again, I was in there last weekend when we had the GA games. Um, it does just the way that uh, the field itself is set up and having that extra space in the back um, with field three, it does, it does allow for enough room for people to be spread out. And again, I think as Bronco had mentioned that their ventilation has increased. So, um, so there is there is some extra efforts going in, um, but I think it's also really valid for all of us to remind families that we know it's fun to watch our kids play. We know that it's good for the mental health of some of our parents. Maybe it's bad for their mental health sometimes, but uh, being social is good. Um, but we also, again, our goal is to keep playing as long as we can. So be. Uh, maybe value or evaluate the want versus need. Do I need to be there or do I just want to be there? And if I send another parent or guardian, whomever, is that good for this game and I can tag out at halftime or the next game? Um, so I think helping families remember that will be helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, last facility for this slide deck is peace of mind for those of you um, that are that are using that and familiar with it again it's a it's a single entrance into the gym. Um, there's no gathering in the building no spectators in the building. Um, Reminder, if you're the last coach in or it doesn't appear that a, there's another team behind you when there normally is, please be the one that locks up and turns off the lights. Um, yeah, I think that's it for that one. I think actually, as I look at this, the other thing that I that I really want to remind all of the coaches about um, is to please make sure that you're staying at these facilities until your kids get picked up, especially now with parents not necessarily coming in the way that they used to. Um, just, yeah, trying to make sure that the little, especially the little ones, but even the middle aged, the middle sized ones, uh, that they're not getting left. Um, Lisa, it's Chase. Hey, Chase. So I think in the past we've talked about. West St. Paul specifically with the kids that are leaving is in pairs and stuff when they leave West St. Paul. Yep. Um, so just so I know like I coach 17 and 18 year olds essentially, but yeah, they need to be leaving in pairs because the parking lots are across the street and you just, you just never know. I know that's been a problem in the past with cars and different things there. So. Yeah. And I think the other thing I would say to having a teenage driver myself is them just simply getting to their car doesn't actually check the box like and I don't expect that you all know all of their cars, but especially as we get in the winter, some of them have cars that don't start some of them have just car trouble so it's actually making sure that they've left the premises. Um, because we certainly don't want them sitting there in a car that's not starting or they're having issues that way too. But yeah, and, and make sure they're paired off. I mean, I know most of mine carpool, but they should be in pairs at least. And because I know I've had in the past, we've had people follow and do different things. Yeah. And especially because it can, I, I know for the older groups, they practice later at night too. So. Yes. Yep. Yep. All good points. Um, all right. A <clears throat> couple of miscellaneous things. Um, not specific to any facility, but what happens if we have a player or a coach uh, who has been exposed to someone that's positive um, or has tested positive themselves, um, please be in contact with me. I am the point of contact for the club when it comes to all of our tracking and reporting. Um, if you hear from a player who wasn't at practice that they were out either because they weren't feeling well or because they, they have potentially been exposed to somebody, um, please let me know that. Uh, the other thing too that I would ask 
that we communicate to our families is if someone in their house is getting a test, uh, we need to assume that that person is positive until we're told that they're negative because sending people out to do things after they've been tested and then finding out that they're positive really just, uh, yeah, it, it's a bummer for the people now that have been impacted by somebody doing that. So um, if people are being tested, whether it's someone in their household or an, a player or coach themselves, uh, they should not be at practice until we know for sure those test results. Um, in the event that you have a player or yourself as a coach, if you test positive, uh, that then we go through the process, but ultimately we look at when, when that person that was positive was last at practice or a game, if it was within a certain time frame of them getting sick or being tested, there is the, the likelihood that the team will quarantine for two weeks. So it is important that, again, that uh, you all reach out to me if you have these instances so that we can be on top of it. We have been fortunate through the fall. I think I had a total of about more than 15, but less than 20. So that was pretty good. And that included our community program as well. So uh, thank you to the people that were vigilant about sanitizing and masks and reporting. Um, in regards to equipment, yes, still continue to sanitize balls and cones, uh, bibs, the kids, you should just be handing them out uh, unless, yeah, you should be handing them out. They can be in charge of washing them themselves. Uh, but, and they should be washing them. Um, but I would not expect that you're collecting them at the end of each night. Any questions on those pieces? Yep. So just this Bronco here again. So just to make sure. So basically if it's so in communicating to the families, just to let them know that if someone, whether it's a parent, sibling that's within their immediate household does go out for a test, they need to let us know, meaning the coach, and uh, just the coach, or let you know, let, just let us know and we communicate to you. And then the second follow-up is then they're instructed to basically not attend practice till that test result is known, correct? Yeah. Yes. Um, so the, the, uh, I, yes to the things that you stated, your question on should they reach out directly to me or should they go to a coach? I am not particular. I suspect going to the coach is probably the most likely path, but if they want to come directly to me, that's totally fine. I'll end up being in touch with you all anyway. So um, it'll ultimately be a conversation amongst the three of us, but yeah, whatever is more comfortable for the family. Thank you. Um, and, and just as a reminder too, um, as a club, we do not advertise anybody's name when there are exposures or positive tests, I realize that it becomes really obvious quickly when somebody is checked out. Um, but nonetheless, it's, it's really important that from a club perspective, our communication follows HIPAA, which does not share medical information or status about individuals. So. Any other questions on those pieces? Yes, I have one. Yeah. If, and I'm just gonna paint the worst case scenario picture, but Perfect. if somebody- I live does, in that world, so. <laughs> yeah, if, if somebody does obviously come to practice and is then tested positive, and maybe they are in a bubble with 250 people, what yeah. will the, I guess, resulting situation be or do we know? Yeah, so we are, we are in essence functioning, and actually let me go back to one of the, the maps. Um, so I'm gonna pull up the, the West St. Paul. So in essence, uh, each, assuming that there's a team on each of these blocks, uh, that block is who is considered to be in close contact. Now, if you scrimmage, say, say you each have half the field and your two halves scrimmage, then, then it would impact everyone. So we go back to who had close contact. So within six feet for more than 15 minutes um, during that time, um, which again is why, yeah, just asking for that attendance and some knowledge of what's going on. 
Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, the last slide that I have uh, is just just to give you all a heads up about what I'm hearing from our peers as they're talking to their facilities. Um, and so for a lot of you, this for, well, for those of you that are in winter leagues and doing games in, at, that are hosted at other facilities, uh, we are hearing all sorts of things, including that facilities will test, uh, take temperatures. So Stillwater Dome, be prepared if you play there, you will have your temperature taken. Minnetonka domes, they will be taking temperatures of everybody that walk in. Um, there's a couple of domes that are not allowing anyone to bring a bag in. Uh, so I would say as you start to go play in other facilities, I would double check before you head out to make sure you know what the rules for that facility are. Um, I do know that TCSL is trying to put together kind of a quick guide, if you will. Um, so that you can resort to that as opposed to having to dig into every facility, but, but it's really up to you to, to know the rules of where you're going to play so that you can be um, communicating that to your families. Um, and then again, just uh, we'll get comfortable with what our facilities say and then we'll go somewhere else and it'll be a little bit different. So be respectful of whatever their rules are and um, and feel free when you go to another facility to ask your families to be more stringent if that is like if we're wearing masks differently than they are. Um, yeah, it's, I would say it's fine to remind people to keep masks on and be washing hands lots and lots and lots. So, um, yeah. All right. What other questions do you guys have for me? Lisa, it's Mario. Um, my question is, if a player from another team reaches out looking to have an extra touch during the week, what is the club's stance on that? Mm. Uh, so we will want to have you work with your director in that regard, just so that we are sure that we're understanding. And that would be that would be consistent with previous years that um, from a from a extra opportunity standpoint in regards to, to the COVID piece, I think we will continue to just uh, allow that, but be aware of it. So obviously okay. we would need to have awareness if they were at a practice so that we could make sure if something came up that we're notifying them as well. Okay, so it's okay so long as the club knows that that is happening. Yep, exactly. Okay, all right, cool, thank you. Anything else? All right. We're all ready to go off and practice indoors. Hey, Lisa, I have a couple questions real quick. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, that. Skylar. Are we still expected as coaches to do the COVID check and send that to COVID-19 at SavoSoc.org? Uh, yes, if you would continue to do that. I know, um, yeah, I think for myself, I would like that. I know kind of as we got through the fall, that started to trail off a little bit, but um, yes, please continue to do that. Okay, thank you. And then I didn't see um, Christian Heritage Academy. Is that gonna be in the that'll next be session? In the, that'll be in the next session with the self documents. All right, thank you. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing too, for all of, for all of you coaches, um, I would prefer, and I know that Peter would say the exact same thing. If you are not feeling well, please don't come to practice. Um, we like all of you, but we want our kids to keep playing. Um, so if you're not feeling great, reach out in the morning and let us know and we'll figure out coverage. But um, we really want to work together on this to be, yeah, to be thoughtful for everybody. So, um, and I suppose that starts with being thoughtful about ourselves. Cool. Uh, well, thanks everyone for your time. Uh, we will share this posting or this recording uh, after we're done here today, but definitely as we go through the week, if you have questions, staff will be on site at all of the facilities this week. So if you have questions, feel free to grab them and ask um, or give me a call, shoot me an email. Um, yeah. 
Let me know. Lisa, that you see yeah. that could be better. Yeah, sorry. sorry yeah, it, so yeah, it, would it be uh, possible to, to also provide the slide deck uh, in, in addition to the yeah. recording? Okay, yeah, cool. Absolutely. Thanks. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Good luck this week. Uh, yeah, we'll be in touch.